I come from a musical family, so we went to a lot of concerts when I was a kid and I was listening to my parents practice and so on. But I think the first time I remember seeing a conductor was when I was seven. I was singing in the children's choir of the National Opera in Helsinki and Hannu Lintu was conducting uh, Carmen, the great opera by Vizier. But there I suddenly, it, it felt like, you know, almost like a lightning, uh, lightning struck. A, wow, you know, this is what I want to do. Of course, I had no idea what the conductor really does and uh, what he needs to be able to do. But, but from that moment, I want to be a conductor. It sounds a bit silly, but it's true. I think a good conductor is a very good musician and I feel that the, the better I play the cello, the more I understand about music and, and the conductor should try to have a, as wide as possible understanding of, of what music is about. I had some, some different instruments in, in my family and my, my relatives and my dad and my uncle played the cello. So then somehow, you know, that was the example I wanted to somehow follow. I love many composers, you know, I have every day in my heart, I have Mozart, Beethoven, Schumann, Bach, you know, many others, but, but Sibelius is, it feels in a, in a different way somehow mine, it feels in a different way personal, and, and of course, growing up in Finland, you know, his music comes everywhere, it's, you're influenced by it, you know, you sing his Christmas carols, and if you pick up an instrument, you know, you're, you're playing those miniatures, and then in an orchestra you play the symphonies, and, and it's, it's music which just, it, it feels very much mine and I, I feel very comfortable with it. So I thought that's of course a very good uh, start for, for our collaboration, both with the orchestra and with the record label. You know, the first symphony is, is still, you know, in the, it contains traces of late romanticism and, and a little bit of, of influence of Russian and Germanic music. But then, you know, the seventh symphony already at the other end is, is a completely different piece. It's a completely different world and, and way of using the orchestra and even treating tonality. There are some wonderful Sibelius cycles, both old and new. I've more and more recently been into the very old historical recordings, uh, which I love very much. Um, of course, they tend to be rather one-off symphonies, not a full cycle, but, but I really, really enjoy even, you know, some of the, of course, old Finnish ones, Robert Kajanus and Albrecht Jannefeld, but also conductors like Kusevitsky and, of course, Karajan, who was actually one of the finest, finest Sibelius conductors. And Sibelius even wrote to Walter Legge uh, a letter saying that, you know, Karajan is, is the only conductor who really understands my music. And that was, that was something very, very touching. But one of my reference cycles, which I grew up with in, in a way, is Leif Segerstam with the Helsinki Philharmonic, and that I really love. It depends a little bit on the day. You know, one day I feel, you know, like a very, very young man with a lot of emotion, then I'm number one. But then if, if, if I feel very melancholic and very Finnish, then I think of number four, which is this very personal, very deep, um, very <coughs> serious, um, but I've always been fascinated by the seventh. Because the seventh has, is, is you know, it, it's one symphony in 20 minutes. And Sibelius says everything in 20 minutes, what Mahler says in the third symphony in one and a half hours. I'm a record freak. I love listening to recordings. I listen to all the new releases usually, and, and, and I try to, you know, find old recordings which I haven't heard and especially those old historical ones I absolutely adore because there is it's such a different way of playing, it's a different world and, and a very different sonority. What I search for orchestras these days is, is this something individual, something rare, because now with, with uh, conductors staying for a very short time and, and spending in general less time with their orchestras, it has led to the orchestras sounding more and more the same. And what I love about this orchestra is that they, they've managed to keep some sort of very special, something very individual, something very rare in their way of playing. And I guess it, it might have something to do with, with also them being very much French uh, or French trained. Um, I don't know whether it comes from the education or from the characteristics of the people. I mean, it's a, it is very much an orchestra of personalities, but it's very much an orchestra of sensitivity. And that I find the most attractive. If it's French, maybe this is French sensitivity. I don't know, I mean, I, I haven't encountered that in Finland, at least. Yeah, Panela is a wonderful pedagogue. 
Um, he's a very Finnish person, so he doesn't speak a lot, but when he speaks it's only, only something which is important. And I think his most important lesson was help, but do not disturb. And that's most important as a conductor. You, know, you should always be helping, but never disturbing. Because the moment you're disturbing, you know, you're on the way. And, and that's a conductor we don't need. Um, he was a master in this, you know, this kind of short, short messages, which came across very, very clearly and easily to our students. Um, teaching conducting is very difficult it's because it's so abstract. You know, if you compare Pierre Boulez and Leonard Bernstein, they do the same job, but it basically looks completely different. Um, both equally amazing. And then how do you, you know, teach that? Because it's something so, so abstract. And, and I think he was, he was masterful in, in the way that he never really wanted to give anything precise. Because if you start giving something, do like this, then everyone starts copying him. And then at the end, the students become in some way copies of, 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 of the teacher. And he was somehow, you know, he, he let all his students sort of try to figure out their own ways. And then he was a little bit guiding, go a little bit that way and that way. And I think it was freedom and the trust was quite important in his teaching. I love silence, to be honest, but I also love music. I mean, sometimes after rehearsal, I, I, I usually don't listen because I've been just, you know, dealing with music and all the time thinking and concentrating. But, but very often I, you know, I just like listening to a lot and I, I carry, you know, my different kind of listening equipment. I have my studio gear and then monitors and headphones and then for traveling different ones. And I try to always sort of, you know, try to get the best sound out, for example. And, and, and it depends a little bit. Piano music I love very much when I just, you know, kind of want to, you know, listen to something little, like listening to Italian concerto of, of Andra Schiff recording, for example, has saved, saved many of my stressful days because, you know, I just listen to it a little bit. Everything is fine. I enjoy very much jazz. I've been getting to know it more and more. I mean, Mette Henriette is one very good example of, of, of a wonderful new voice who, who I think has something very special to offer. Um, of course, also some of the more, more historical jazz I enjoy very much, but it also depends a little bit on the mood.